Hello and welcome back to Views on the Road. I'm your host Steph and today I'm going to show you how to make juicy albondigas. I'm also going to share with you how I make this a super easy dinner by meal prepping. The day that I go grocery shopping and I purchase my vegetables, I tend to wash them. I take that opportunity to chop the vegetables that I'm going to need for the week. Uh, I found that by adding water and one teaspoon of white vinegar, it helps me keep this for up to five to seven days. So all my vegetables are ready for when I need to use them for this particular recipe. When I chop my cilantro, I place a paper towel to absorb the moisture and I place it in a Ziploc bag because I'm able to fit more ingredients in my refrigerator this way. You can use whatever you'd like to place them in your refrigerator. You can use a glass mason jar, but this is how I made it comfortable for my home this past week. And for my vegetables here, I have onion, tomato, and garlic, and I just place it in a plate. And this plate also helps me keep it organized in my refrigerator because I just place it over the top just like this and it doesn't require that much space. I know you're probably wondering, what about the albondiga step? How do we keep those fresh? Not to worry, let's go over the rest of the ingredients and then when we get to our meatballs, I'm gonna share a lot of tips with you. For this delicious recipe, you'll need one and a half to two pounds of ground beef, one egg, two tomatoes, one onion, three garlic cloves, two medium zucchinis, four medium carrots, four medium potatoes, one Anaheim pepper, a small bunch of cilantro, three tablespoons of rice, one teaspoon of Mexican oregano, one teaspoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of mint, four to five tablespoons of chicken bouillon, and eight cups of water. To your ground beef, you wanna add your egg, Mexican oregano, ground cumin, black pepper, salt, mint, rice, and vinegar. And the reason you're gonna add vinegar to your albondigas, it's not just to preserve them in case you decide to meal prep them. And the vinegar is also gonna help us keep our albondigas nice and juicy and break through that rice so that it can be fully cooked. Continue combining all of your ingredients until everything is well blended. Once you're done combining your ingredients, you're gonna start making your albondigas. Albondigas are your meatballs. I like to give them a nice little press like this. And then you're just gonna roll them up as big as you would like them. So if you like your meatballs bigger, make them a little bit bigger. And if you need them a little bit smaller, go ahead and continue. Our meatballs are ready, let's start cooking. Place your burner on a medium high heat and drizzle a good tablespoon and a half of oil. I'm using olive oil today, but you can go ahead and make it comfortable for your home. Next, you're gonna add your garlic, tomato and onions and you're gonna saute until everything's nice and soft. Once everything is nice and soft, you're gonna add your water. And if you so happen to have a lot of chicken bouillon or beef broth on hand, you can add that right on in instead of your water for added flavor. We're still cooking on a medium high heat. And once you add your water, you just wanna wait till everything comes to a boil. We've reached a beautiful boil just like you, Views Club. And now it's time to add your chicken bouillon. If you have beef bouillon, uh, chicken tomato bouillon, that's the one that you want to add. Don't feel limited in this recipe. Make it comfortable for your home. I'm going to start off with about four tablespoons of chicken bouillon and then once everything's boiled towards the end I'm going to taste it and then I'll adjust as needed and I recommend you guys do the same. Once I add the chicken bouillon to our broth I'm going to start reforming our albondigas because you'll see when you set them down one side is flat so I'm just going to reform them like this hardly anything and I'm going to drop them in gently pushing out that way. Try it one more time so that you guys don't injure yourselves at home and this hot broth doesn't splash on you. So drop it in gently that way. Usually I wait until I boil my albondigas about eight minutes, but today I'm gonna do this a little bit different because my kids are giving me hungry eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and add our potatoes. I've already removed the excess water. And the same with our carrots and the rest of our veggies. I remove most of that water. Your zucchinis. Anaheim pepper. And if you don't happen to have an Anaheim pepper on hand, you can use a New Mexico green chili, a poblano, and even a green bell pepper will work for this recipe. This is optional, but I do like my albondigas with a little bit of tomato sauce because it adds even more flavor to our broth. So I'm gonna go ahead and add half of a can. And that's an eight ounce can. Give that a gentle loving mix and keep the lid off until we achieve another boil. Once your pot reaches a boil, you're gonna lower your temperature to a medium heat 
You're gonna place the lid right over your pot and you're gonna continue to cook for 14 to 15 minutes. Lastly, you're gonna add your cilantro. Give that a gentle mix, turn your burner off and we're ready to serve. This is so good, I got started without you guys. I'm sorry I took the first bite today, but you do wanna pair this with some rice. And if you hear some little whining sounds, I'm babysitting a puppy today. So this is a super fun day and a great day to sit down with my family and have some soup. Mmm, absolutely delicious. As always, Cloud and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. And we want to thank all the dog walkers out there. You are angels. Thank you so much for doing what you do. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Adios.